ahead and give him a shout of praise and bless the living God. His faithfulness prevails over all. Yeah, it's got your name on it. Go ahead, tell your neighbor it's got your name on it. It has everything already prepared for you. Nothing is missing in it. When you sit in it, you get it all. When you eat, it's more than you can possibly imagine. And when you live what God has given, you can't touch the magnitude of the meal you've just partaken of. Because the Harvest is God's. It's not your design. It's not even your desire. It's his table. It's what he designed. It's where, oh my goodness, I see something that's very unusual today. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chairs that are empty. There were children in them. They went to children's service, but they're reserved. Now, how many did I count? Thank you. I just wanted to make sure you were hearing. So who are my nine that have a reserved seat in the front with me? Where's my nine people? They, they get up at your seat right now. If it's your reservation, you better go take it now because somebody else is going to sit in your seat if you don't get in that seat. Oh, my goodness, there's more than nine people. Bless you. Yeah, you, you better run. All right, now, how'd we do? No, no, wait a minute. We, we have one seat left. Okay, because you know, Yvonne's running up here. Because you know, if you don't sit in your reserved seat, somebody else is going to sit in it. And somebody else steps into what God designed for you. I want you to open up your spirit to God today. If you want one of the outlines, you can raise your hand. The ushers give it to you. I'm probably not going to get into it, but that's all right. It's also online. You can get it on our app. But the point that we have today is there's a reservation of a called place in God that each one of us have. I don't know what type of conflicts and issues and challenges and situations and circumstances you've been through. I don't know how deep the pain has been and how conflicting the environment's been and how much opposition the enemy has risen up to say you don't belong here, you can't sit here, you can't be here, you can't have a voice here, you can't have an action here, you can't have a presence here. I don't know the dimension of rejection that has come when you've come to sit in your seat. But I do know that God has a call, and that call is unique. It's specific. As a matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 14, Jesus said, many are what? Called, but few are what? Now, what's the difference between a calling and God choosing? What's the differential in your life, in my life, between God speaking from the mental hospital that God delivered me out of when I was 18, I mean, literally delivered me out of, and the call of God, and then the choice. What do we go through between the calling and the chosen. What do 
we experience? What is our part? What's God's part? Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that as we open up your word, today I pray you answer issue, question, conflict, circumstance. You open up our heart to a dimension of effectiveness that we would know the place of our calling and the seat at your table. And God, what our responsibility is in your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, how many of you here saw the angels minister, the young ladies come and minister? How many of you saw them? All right. How many of you didn't see them? Raise your hand. Okay. You didn't see the the angels dance. Now, let me just tell you something about when you come to the table of the Lord, there's something that's very unique. Is it half prepared or is it fully prepared? It's fully prepared, right? You don't come to anything that Jesus has ordained in your life as it being half-baked. You come just like with the angels ministering. They practice for hours upon hours upon hours. The dance routine, the the study of the the way in which the choreography worked, the, the way in which all of their actions and facial expressions, the facing of the audience and not facing themselves and all the different dynamics of being in a production and communication of a grace that is on the ministry of dance. And all that production and all that work is a preparation. And then it's delivered to your life. You say, well, oh, weren't they cute? Well, not about being cute. Well, weren't they excellent? Oh, yeah, they were excellent. But is it really about excellence? Because what if one of them messed up? How many of you would have felt the the pain of their own sense of embarrassment. I didn't see any error, so I had none of that go on. But how many of you would have felt the pain of their embarrassment had they messed up? Of course, everybody would have. Why? Because they're part of us. And their preparation makes all of their work part of our experience. So their experience and expression of worship, their outpouring of praise, their dance and celebration becomes in us a celebration and a glory. Why? Because we came to what was prepared. You see, God designed the kingdom of God with preparation before manifestation. And sometimes we just, in some ways, look at the kingdom of God, look at the church, look at the body of Christ as being what they do rather than who I am. The calling of God to his feast of his kingdom is a very direct call of accountability and responsibility. How many of you believe those young ladies had to take tremendous commitment to not do other things so they could be competent and qualified in the dance? How many of you think they had to give up something? Oh yeah, there was a surrender. There was a sacrifice. There was a decision that they were going to put dance to the Lord before video games. They were going to put dance before the Lord before other activities of going out with friends. They were going to take a practice of which I'm sure there was some mumbling and grumbling and some, I can't be this night. I've got, okay. I'll surrender it. I'll give it up. Why? Because there's a decision that that which I am called to, I'm responsible in. And when I'm responsible, I'm accountable. I stand before God for the inheritance that he has for me, not for the clap of the audience or the recognition that somebody might think that I did a good job, but from God himself, that he would be pleased and honored with the sacrifice of my praise. So everything that happens in the body of Christ in preparation is a very unique experience, but we live with distractions. We live with areas of the enemy that try to bring worries and other priorities in, and our life of worship, our life of prayer, our life of the word, our life of fellowship and evangelism. 
You see, all types of things come in to take us away from what God said, when you engage with me, I will do with you what you could never do with yourself. I would take you to a place, I will fulfill a dimension, I will manifest as you take your seat. Now, I don't know about you, my seat has never been in dancing. I, I just have to confess to you, this is not one of my strengths. And I'm going to also confess, of which everyone already knows, my other weakness is English. And so God uses my weakness for his glory. My strength was in mathematics and science. Guess what I do? Speak. <laughs> Why? Because in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. And sometimes we think we have to be perfect for his strength to show up. And I've got good news for you. All you've got to do is sit in your seat. And if you're like Moses and you say to God, God, I can't speak. And God said, fine, I'll give you Aaron. So Moses is saying, oh, thanks. I've had enough of him already all my life. Now he's going to be my voice. So what happens is you find yourself when you take your seat, there is no excuses. Now, let's take a look at the parable of the sower. This kind of gets into what do we experience as we begin to hear what God is saying in relationship to our life. What is God speaking to us? I can, I can take this now and take that off. I forgot I had this on. So Mark chapter 4, verse 13, take a look at it. It says, and he said unto them, don't you know this parable? How then shall you know every parable? And he goes on and says, the sower sows the what? Now, we look at the word as being, oh, this is the word of salvation. Oh, this is the word of, no, this is the utterance of God to every one of us at all time. Because we come to the experience of the living word of God. And as we come to the experience of the living word of God, these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they've heard what happens, Satan comes how fast? Immediately and takes away that which was sown in their hearts. Let me just take the young ladies that danced as an example. You know, you could recognize the honor and the glory and the presence and the praise that is to the Lord. And you could say, huh. My daughter didn't get into that dance group. And you know what happened? The enemy takes away the very thing that God intended to be honored. Same thing with the band, the choir, the worship team. Do you have any idea how many hours they practice? Do you have any idea how many hundreds of thousands of dollars are in this platform so that they can be heard they can be, do you know that there's now new woofers? Everybody say woofers. Yeah, we, we, we had 30-year-old woofers. How many of you do not know what a woofer is? All right, can we make a woofer? Let's see. Oh, he just went back, okay. At any rate, a woofer is what you feel. Can, can you make a woofer be felt? Uh, would, you, would you please? Would you please? Let us experience a woofer. Now, a woofer is not heard. A woofer is felt. So, are we ready to feel a woofer? Oh. How many of you can feel it? <laughs> hey! Hey! How I feel it! It's coming up in my bones! Oh yeah! I feel it! It's rising in my spirit! 
See, I can take what I feel, turn it into a spiritual dynamic, and I can find a nature that comes out of what I don't hear, but what I feel in my spirit. I want you to lift your hands and thank God you experience his power through a woofer. A woofer! Now, you might say, I lost my woofer beater. <laughs> Where is it? It's hidden under the stage because the entire stage becomes the resounding influence of the background that makes the woofer feel the impact. And tell your neighbor, it's a young woofer. Yeah, it has to grow up. It's not mature yet. It'll take about six months for that woofer to mature. Six months of operation of that woofer, it'll be mature. And the next thing you know, rather than having a, a different sound and feel, it'll have a mellow penetration. And you'll come away, my God, I give honor to you. Because something happens in the spirit. That which was designed comes into operation in its seat. Oh, it's seated out of sight. Nobody will ever see it. As a matter of fact, the last one sat there for 30 some years. Worked perfectly, we took it out. We're just gonna clean it up and make it available for outside work. But I want you to know something about every part of touching your life is complete so that its impact is effective. You see, something happens in your spirit in worship and the enemy wants to steal it. How many of you get to work on time? Anybody here get to work on time? How many of you have trouble getting to church on time? Now, seriously, how many of you can get to work like, man, that's it. I'm gonna take five extra minutes to make sure the traffic's are not gonna jam me up. I've got an alternative route to take. But when it comes to 10 o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock, if you're going to be in the fellowship time or the prayer time, I mean, how many of you run into all types of situations in the house, the dog messes somewhere and all of a sudden you're like, I can't do this, we gotta go to church. The children say, I don't know, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go. All right, now all of a sudden here comes resistance and it's now 9.50 <laughs> and it takes 15 minutes to get there. So you start thinking, should I even go? I mean, after all, I can watch it on the internet and I get the same thing. How many of you got the picture? But there's something different when you break through and what the enemy wants to do to steal that word and you press in and you say, no, we're making this happen. We're make, we, are, we are making this happen. We're making it on time. Because what's happening in worship, I'm not going to lose that word that manifests from the presence of God as I met, because he inhabits the praise of his people. You see, then there's those that had the word that's sown on stony ground, who've heard the word and immediately, man, they get excited, but they have no root in themselves. They only endure, I mean, they're like, like flash paper, excited, big fire, and go out. There's no substance, no root. It says, so they endure for a time, and afterward, affliction, persecution arises for the word's sake, and how quick? Immediately they are what? Offended. So here is the woofer. And somebody says, 
I can't believe they spent $10,000 on that thing. Because you know what? I, I've got other use for money and I wouldn't put $10,000 in that woofer if I had to. So what happens? The word comes, persecution. Areas, and you get what? Offended. You start hearing what God intended for your breakthrough as, what about me? I mean, they took care of a woofer, but did they really take care of me? I've got electric bills that didn't get paid. I'm behind in my rent, I'm behind in my mortgage, and they bought a woofer. A woofer! I mean, to ask your neighbor, what good is a woofer? When I have a need, well, I'll tell you what good a woofer is. The good of a woofer is it's the word that's here to manifest the life of God so you cannot be offended. You say, but wait a minute, you mean I've got to get through my need? I've got to get through my own agenda? I've got to get through my own conflict, my own challenges I face in order to value what is completed for me? Oh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, you can't even get to the table of the Lord if you don't get through offense. And how many of you know people that became offended that are now sidelined? No matter what excuses they give, their effectiveness is minimized. How many of you know a few? I know a lot. And you say, why? Well, it's part of getting to your seat. Tell your neighbor to get to your seat. You've got to get through the offense. If you don't get through the offense, never get to your seat. Well, let's take a look at another one. Verse 18. Then there are those that are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word and the cares. Now all of a sudden, some people get successful. How many of you know some successful people that now make too much money to give. Uh, I, you don't mind if I talk about it for a minute. It says that the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches and lust of other things, entering in and do what? Choke. Choke. What? The word. And what? It. That word does not become fruitful. You see, to get to your seat, Oh, you're going to get financially blessed. And you know, I, I, I tell you what, God has ordained increase for the body of Christ. I, I can, I'll be I'm absolutely candid with you. I've watched those who have persisted, pursued, and penetrated through every obstacle, resistance, hindrance, all of the allurements, all of the agendas, and then came into the abundance, and then the abundance took them right off the scene. And it's like, where'd they go? Oh, they took their abundance with them. Because after all, giving at $600,000 a year, the tithe begins at 60. And then you give offerings, you're over 100. Just tell your neighbor, let it be your problem. Yeah. yeah. How, how many of you just take, would take that problem right there? How about but now you got to do something with it because when you have that breakthrough, then you can't get destroyed by it. You can't get deterred by it. You can't get turned aside by it. You say, but what is God doing with me? Tell your neighbor he's getting you to your seat. So you're not going through all of this conflict to go nowhere. You're going through the conflict to get to the called seat that God has at the table for him to fulfill what he designed for you. <laughs> then they that are sown on good ground, everybody tell your neighbor, this is not about the seed. It's all about you. The ground. It's about you, how the word works in you, how you value 
another person's life of sacrifice and surrender and choices that they make to bring the kingdom of God first and advance the government of God and how you appreciate and value those that have prepared beforehand so when you come, it's all done. You know, I'll tell you, last year at this time, we put the air conditioning system in. How many of you were here when it didn't work? I was here for probably 10 years while it didn't work. And every August, we'd pray it'd be cool. Because only two of the air conditioners worked in the entire building. And after all, they're only about $90,000. Just tell your neighbor, just a small pittance. Yeah. So last year, within less than 30 days, all the finances were given and all the air conditioners were installed. Hallelujah. I mean, I, I, I want you to thank... Now, I, I, did you see what the temperature is going to be next Sunday? 81 degrees. Pastor Faye and I looked at the temperature. We said it's going to be 81 next Sunday. Guess what? Who cares? We've got air conditioning. Thank you, Jesus. It is done. It is finished. Why? Because somebody already paid and gave the money. All the people that knew how to do it put it in. It's all done. So I don't care what the temperature is anymore. I don't pray about August. I thank God for August. Oh, how many of you remember our carpet? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, why am I saying this? I'm talking about completion. Things in the body of Christ, whether it's the worship ministry and all that comes into play in their activity, their commitment, their sellout, their practice, so that your engagement with the presence of God, your experience, whether it's the dance ministry, whether it's the prayer ministry, whether it's the ministry of the word of God, whether it's the ministry that goes on throughout the week, daily victory, those of you that call in, those of you that get called, that get ministered to, the hospital visits, the homes that those that are shut in at homes, whatever the dimension of coming to the seat, there is a price for that seat. I mean, you know, we look at this screen behind us now and uh, we complain about these things. Look at how dull they are. You can even hardly see that white guy up there. And now he's gone. All right, so what happens is you get something that's complete and you look at what's incomplete and it can become an offense. So everything you experience, whether it's the completion of something or the incompletion of something, something happens to you and you have to deal with it so that mentally, psychologically, relationally, you take your seat and you thank God for grace prevailing in the house of the living God. You thank God that those that worked, those that sowed, those that gave, those that believed, those that stood, those that worked, did it so you could experience God. You come to your seat. Well, let's take a look at what happened when those were called. Luke 14, 15. One of them that sat at meat with Jesus said to him, blessed is he that eats in the kingdom of God. And he said unto him, you got to understand something about this, son. A certain man made a supper. I mean, it was a great meal. You should have seen the amount of work and labor that just going into the fields and finding the cattle, then going to the slaughterhouse and slaughtering them and then butchering them and, and quartering them and then selecting the vegetables and all the things that went into the cooking and then setting up the tables and all those that worked that put in the effort and the energy and the time and the toil to present a supper so that when it's delivered, it's delivered hot. How many of you here have ever cooked dinner for your family? How many of you had a family member that showed up late? How many of you had this? 
do you have any idea of what I went through to prepare this meal and you decided to stay with your friend for an extra two hours? Well, your dinner is in the refrigerator. You can put it in the microwave if you like and enjoy it hot and be blessed. Because there's something about when somebody doesn't show up at the table on time, the one that prepared it They got to deal with it. How many of you got the picture? Because if they don't deal with it, oh man, when that child shows up, assuming it's one of the children, prayerfully it wasn't your husband. So all of a sudden when this person doesn't show up, there's grace abounding for them. But listen to the word of God. And he said to them, a certain man made a great supper and bade them. That means called by name. Specific name, individual name, not just y'all come, but Josette, come. Josiah, come. Jose, come. And it's you. And the call is your name. And he has sent his servants at supper time to say to them that we're called. Now, wait a minute. They had God speak their name, and then servants came. How many of you got what I'm saying? They already heard the voice of God. Now God is sending somebody saying, this is the call for you to come to the table. And the servant is saying, your name has been called. Your name has a place mark. Your seat is established. And those that were called by name, those that had a servant come with their name tag, they all with one excuse said, look, man, I got a piece of ground. I can't, I can't, I can't. Great having a meal. Somebody, you know, I can't. I got something else going on. Another person says, I bought five yoke of oxen. Do you know how much harvest they will produce for me? If I don't get on them right now, I can't, I can't, I can't. Another one says, I married a wife. And she's not going to let me come to anybody's dinner. I can't come. So what happens is there's a name, a place, a position, a call, a servant that has gone out with your name, your call, your purpose, your seat at his table. How much has stepped in the way? Who has given obstruction and resistance? What cause has made you say, it might be a great call. I'm so thankful for it. I appreciate the fact that, God, you're sending servants. I know a lot is going into it. I know everything's prepared. But, you know, I just have something else in me, and I can't get rid of it. So what happens to your seat? Tell your neighbor, it's given to another. You say, do I ever get it back? You hear that call again. You hear that voice again. I can't guarantee that when God is speaking to you and you're hearing it and the servant has come to say it's your name because the scripture does not say they get called again. It says now... The servant came and showed his Lord these things in verse 21. And the master of the house was angry with the servant and said to his servant, because he was angry that his call didn't work, he was angry that his servant didn't work, just like the woman and the man that would make the meal and the family didn't show up, there is this, I can't believe they did it again. 
And something happens in the spirit when the call of God is on our life, when the grace of God is working with us, we are called to respond to God. Because there's a nature in God is called wrath. You say, but thank God we're in a time of grace. Oh yeah, I know we're in grace. But Jesus spoke these scriptures. He said, go out and quickly into the streets and lanes and bring, which means to introduce, there's a different seat for you. For you didn't even know this was here for you. You had no idea what was prepared and I'm going to need to lead you there. See, the other people knew where their seat was. They knew where they belonged, which of course this is talking about the Jews. But some of us know what God has called us to. We know what God has spoken to us. We know what God wants to do with us. We've had servants come and affirm to us that God has given to us a response to his grace. And here comes another and says, look, let me lead you to his place. Let me show you what you've never known, which of course is the Gentile world, but also he says, bring here the poor, the maimed, the halt, the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it's done as you commanded, but there's still room. There's still room. There's still extra space. There's more meat. There's more potatoes. There's more preparation. You did it all, and there's an empty seat. So Jesus said, look, they didn't come when they were called. Those that were compelled did not know how to follow right he said, now I want you to constrain. I want you to go and hog tie and bring some with you. And the Lord said, go into the highways, the hedges, and compel them. That means constrain them to come in that my house might be filled. For I say unto you that those men which were bidden or called shall not taste of my supper. Wow. Boy, that's a powerful reality, isn't it? Then you can go on in Matthew chapter 22, and it ends up in verse 14. It says, many are called, but few are what? Chosen. I want you to lift up your hands to God. Father, this is a house that's sanctified and holy unto you. It is our body. It is the habitation of your grace that you have ordained for us. You have called us by name and you called us to a seat in your house for your glory. You called us to be a partaker of the great grace of God. You called us to what labor has been done by thousands before us. But most of all, what you did through your son, Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the call of God in our life. We thank you for the grace of God. I want you to take every sense of malice, of frustration, of conflict, and just release it. Get it off of you right now. Thank God for an open heaven over your life, that you have an access. Thank God that every negative word, every word of difficulty with people, with individuals, with circumstance, you just forgive by the blood of Jesus. You just release them and thank God for grace that prevails and abounds. You reckon them crucified in Christ and pray that their ears are open to hear. So God, today, we pray our ears open to hear. The call's gone out. Everything has been prepared. All is finished. Oh my God, I thank you. I give you praise. Just thank God that it's finished. Thank God that his blood was shed, it's paid for the sin of your life. Thank God that the power of the enemy has been broken and nothing has authority over you. Thank God you have a call to not just eat yourself, but multiply what God has given you. Before we take another step, I believe in my spirit that God is speaking to some hearts today. 
that you've been called, you've heard. You've heard God pull in your heart. God sent me as his servant to say to you, he's, he's called you. He, he has a seat for you, just like we, we brought the front row. And I, I think it's the only full row in the entire church because it was a called row. It wasn't a choice row. You see, there's a difference. Many are called, but few are chosen. That was a choice. How many of you, the Spirit of God is speaking to you right now that there is a far greater experience with God that he's called you to than what you're currently walking in? Raise your hand and wave at me. It should be every one of our hands because it's, it's who he is to us. And he doesn't call us to sit where we are. He calls us to sit where he is. Where he reigns. But some of us don't know that place. We don't know that that call of God belongs in my life and I belong in that call. We've never connected in that communion with the living God. We, we don't know with absolute certainty that I know that I'm a child of God. I, I just don't know that I'm in my place in the kingdom of God as his child. How many of you in all sincerity, if you were to die at this moment of time, you are not absolutely, completely resolved in your heart that you know that you know that you know you're in the throne of God. How many of you are unsure of your place as a child of God? Raise your hand and wave at me. If you're not sure, you're not sure, you're not sure. Who else is not sure? If you're not sure, it's okay if you're not sure. It's just not okay if you leave here unsure because the call's gone out. The voice of God has gone out. The servant has been sent. I brought the word that says, God has your name on it. There's a seat with your name on it. So I'm going to ask you, every one of you, that you know that God is speaking to you, God is drawing you, but you know that connection is not taking place. I want you to get up at your seat. I'm going to pray with you right now. We're going to make that connection. Come on down. Let's pray together. There's several hands that raise. Yeah, come on down. Just stand up right where you are. Come on down. This is God's time. This is God's appointment. This, those other hands that you raise, you, you just don't have that knowledge of that experience of that love of God in your life. You don't know. You don't have that experience of connection as God's direct offspring. Oh, my Father, just ask yourself, am I called to a new seat right now? Am I called? Am I called? Is God, if God's calling you, come. If God's calling you, come. If God's speaking to you, come. If God's moving in you, come. Don't let anything stop what God's doing. Let's lift up our hands, everybody. Lift up your hands. And I want everybody to say with me, my God, my Father, you called me from before I was ever born. You knew me while I was yet in my mother's womb. And today, your spirit has called my name. And I respond to you. Jesus, I acknowledge the power of you, the living word. Come into my heart. Live in me. Live through me. Jesus, your blood was shed. I am forgiven. And you raised me in power. Lift up your hands. I want everybody to stand to your feet for a moment. Prayer ministers, just come for a moment and we're going to have these come off and, and you guys can just take a moment and pray with them. So if our prayer ministers would come, we're going to go off here to my right, your left, and 
we're just going to go into room 100 right now. Yeah, so just go ahead over there, right off to my left. I want everybody to lift up your hands as the prayer ministers are going to pray with them. I want you to just say with me, Father, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill me afresh. I drink in afresh the power of your spirit. Jesus, you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And I take my seat at the right hand of my Father. And I make your enemies my footstool. I make this world obey your voice and I make this body do the will of God Father I thank you let's just give him praise just thank you just thank you for great grace just thank you for loving kindness and tender mercies now before we're seated I, I want you to just turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you are called to your seat. Take it. Take it. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. 